Welcome. Today we're going to glaze plates. In my last video, I will show you how I make these plates. And as you may remember, I did three different uh, types of clay. And today we're going to glaze them with all the different glazes that I want to test out. So I hope you will join me. And in the end of the video, I'll show you the results. I'm very happy with how they turned out. I mean, first of all, <laughs> they all survived. And uh, some people are very afraid of how to, um, to fire the plates because they think they're very fragile. And I don't know, maybe they are to some, but these clays are very um, solid. They work really well. I even stacked, um, I think up to six or seven of the, of the plates on top of each other, <clears throat> and none of them cracked. They all have nice bottoms. Um, and one of the things that I'm really happy about is the time that I spent, not that much actually, but I, uh, as you may remember, I burnished um, the button uh, first with a soft whip and then with a shiny stone. Um, <clears throat> and because of the, the foamy uh, bed that I made for my plates, it was quite easy. I could apply the right pressure and now they feel like, well, baby skin, <laughs> we try to say, in, in, usually say in Denmark, maybe a little bit awkward, but you know what I mean. It's just super smooth and nice. And that's good because I'm not going to have glaze on, um, on the outside of the rim and the bottom, of course. I'm just going to do glazing on the inside. There are many ways that you can uh, glaze plates. Probably unlimited ways you can glaze them. I tried different uh, versions. I, <clears throat> in the first ones I did, I, um, I waxed the button um, and then I dipped it. I hold them like this and I dipped them into my bucket. That was okay, but two things, it was quite time consuming and I still had to wash it off uh, because even though it's easy to wash off with the wax, I still had to do that work. Then I tried um, using a, 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 a some type of tube, um, could be syringe <coughs> actually, sorry. Um, and I put it on the wheel and I used that and a brush and it was okay. I mean, it's just not all glazes that will work for that. Um, so today I'm going to do what I think is actually the, the easiest and best ways for the glazes I'm using. Where I'm actually just going to pour a little bit of glaze into it, swirl it around and take it out. For most of the, of the rim, it's going to be fine. Of course, where I pour it out, it's going to be a little bit of overflow. That's easy to remove. And then I will take a sponge all the way around and make sure that it looks really nice. Glaze on the inside, raw clay on the outside. All these clays, the red one, high iron, um, this one that will actually turn more black <laughs> when, when it's fired. And this one that's a beautiful gray. Um, they all look really good um, when they're not glazed too. So that's why I specifically chose these clays. I also have a clay that I really like to throw in, but if you don't glaze it, it looks yeah, sort of boring. So um, these ones are the ones I will use for this. I will be testing <clears throat> seven, at least, seven different glazes. Um, I only made seven of the red one, then I ended up making a little more, so there's nine of the black and the gray one. Uh, so I may either just do doubling on some of the glazes or try another glaze on the remaining two on the black and the gray. I'm not sure yet. But in any case, I'm going to put, <clears throat> I have put all of the glazes and the different clays into a spreadsheet <laughs> to try and be as organized as possible to keep track of the glazes that I'm going to test. I'm going to add a small number and I'm going to put that number in my spreadsheet for each of the plates and uh, the glazes with this underglaze pen. It's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful um, invention in case you don't have this. I think you should go and buy one. You can get it in most pottery stores. Um, it's basically a glaze <clears throat> in a pen, so you can write on your pot and you can you can fire it and it's going to stay there. Um, because 
as much as I wish I could remember uh, which clays I put on which plate, uh, realistically, I won't. So it's going to be much, much easier to have that number and reference it in my sheet when I'm done. So now it's time to prepare the glazing. And there's two things I want to do before I actually start glazing. I want to um, wash them off, of course. I only need to do this on the inside. Always clean your plates, because even though they look fine, um, you want to make sure that there's no dust or anything, because that's going to mess up with the glaze. Also, when I do that, I will I will take a look. They, they all look pretty good, but if there's any little bumps or anything I want to remove, um, now's the time. And to do that, I just use some sandpaper. But remember, if you do this, you're going to create silicate dust, and that's very bad for your health. You don't want to inhale that. So either you should um, wet, uh, um, uh, grind it, <laughs> which doesn't create any dust, or you should wear a mask. Um, I'm just saying that because, especially if you work a lot with this, or inhaling all that fine particle silica into your lungs is very bad. Um, but I think actually I don't need to, um, to grind any of these. And, and, and I do think in general it's better if you can throw things per perfectly, <laughs> perfectly as you can, uh, but at least without any artifacts that you need to grind. I, th I think it's safer <laughs> and, and it's easier and faster if, if you can finish it on the wheel and just, um, just rinse it with a sponge. So let's go ahead and do that. Another thing I'm looking forward to in this test is not just the glazes, but to see how many glazed plates <clears throat> I can fit in my kiln with these new um, plate shelves that I got. I showed you in the last video. I'll show you again here. Because this way I can stack many more in the kiln and uh, I hope I can actually have all 25 plates plus some more uh, pots. And that's going to be very interesting because that's going to bring the cost down of glaze firing the plates um, a lot. So. I'm looking forward to that, but of course I will show you how it stacks up <laughs> in the kiln as we go. Before I start glazing the plates, I just want to really quickly go through the eight different glazes that I think I'm going to try today. Some of them I'm sure I want to try, and as I said, there was two extra plates on the black and the grey, so I may add an extra one for that. The first one is uh, called Hellblau. It's uh, the only commercial glaze out of all the ones that, actually, there's another extra one, so two commercial glazes, but Hellblau is from Karl Jäger in uh, Germany. They make some wonderful glazes, and uh, this one I haven't used a long time. It comes out really, really nice, as you can see on this image, um, but the problem with it is that it settles so badly. So I did um, try and, and improve it by adding some bentonite, and we'll see how that goes. Um, <laughs> I have another video of how exactly I did that, because it's a little bit tricky when you already have a glaze that is mixed. So I um, haven't used it for a long time, but I do like it very much. Then I'm going to use one of my all-time favorites, uh, Folk Art White Gilt. It's a sort of a white glaze, but because I have such a high amount of iron oxide in it, it breaks wonderful. Uh, so if you have edges or you have uh, textures, in this case, with the with the plates, there's a little, little uh, swirly mark that I hope is gonna gonna do something great to it. Then I'm gonna do uh, the one that I actually used on my first plates, which is a modified charcoal black mat. Now it's not black anymore because I removed the original uh, colorants, and instead I added a little bit of cobalt and a little bit of a black uh, stain. What I hoped for was that it would be blue, <laughs> but what I didn't realize is that there was a lot of uh, titanium in, um, in in some of the components there, and the titanium with the cobalt reacts in a way that turns green. But it's actually very beautiful green, so I kind of like it, and I think I'm going to stick with that. Then I'm going to do a Lynette Opal, uh, which is sort of white. It's a very good uh, glaze on top of uh, floating blue that we're also going to use. But it also looks really good on itself, and especially if it's very thin, then it becomes bluish. Um, so I'll see how that goes. And of course, 
the other one of my all-time favorites, the Floating Blue. Uh, and there's a lot of different variations of Floating Blue. This one is largely based on Old Ford's um, version where um, uh, red iron oxide has been exchanged for manganese and a few more modifications. But, but basically it, it breaks off in a more purple way instead of brown. So I like that. Then I'm also going to use Waterfall, which is a glaze that um, my aunt, who is a full-time ceramic artist, uh, suggested to me years ago. And I used it a lot on black clay and dark clay. It's really, really beautiful. Then I haven't used it for a long time. But it's actually a wonderful glaze. So now I'm going to try it on these plates and see how that turns out. And finally, I'm going to use uh, the Heath A2 White which is also a very nice uh, liner glaze. I use it a lot in combination with the, the, the floating blue, but it also looks very good on itself, and especially if I give it a very light, um, light uh, layer, a thin layer of glaze. So that was the seven of them. Oh yeah, there's one more, eight glaze. And that's the other commercial glaze that I'm gonna try. Um, it's called Sandwich Effect. <laughs> uh, so it's from a, a local supplier called Silica uh, Nordic. And this one I actually really like. I use it on some bowls and stuff and some cups and it comes out really, really nice. So um, I never use it on plates. So I'll see how that comes out. On top of testing all these glazes on the different clays, I also want to um, use the plate. Because one thing is how the plates are going to turn out visually, but it's also a functional aspect. They should all be more or less food safe. <laughs> I think food safe enough. Um, but there's also the issue of cuddly marks. Uh, if there's two, um, marks, for example, circle packs in the in the glaze, it's so hard, it becomes so hard that it actually tears out the, the, the metal in, in your cutlery and it leaves cuddly marks. Of course, you don't want that. And it should all be able to survive several times in the dishwasher and all that stuff. You know, it's it's function wear. It needs to function. So now we are ready for the big glaze circus. <laughs> I'm going to do one color at a time. So the three different kinds of clay with one color, put it in the kill, and then do the next ones. And I made this, um, printed out my spreadsheet um, with all the different uh, uh, glazes I'm going to try and the different uh, clays. And then I'm going to add the number at the bottom of each of them to begin with before I even do the glazing. So then it's done. I'm going to put it into my uh, table here. I look very organized doing this, but trust me, I'm usually not that organized, but I had bad experience with uh, thinking I could remember this, and of course you can't, so now I'm trying to do it very organized. I'm going to start out with folk art. Um, as I mentioned, it's a whitish glaze with a very nice um, break of this uh, iron um, color. So first we have to mix it up, of course. The only thing about this glaze, and that goes for any glaze with this much iron, is that it's very messy. <laughs> Uh, iron is a wonderful colorant, but uh, it's also very strong. <laughs> so watch out. Uh, I'm wearing old clothes, so so it's okay. But if you if you get something on it, it's very difficult to get off again. And see, now I almost forgot to do what I said I would. <laughs> anyway, this is gonna be number one. Just like that, and it's going to stay throughout the fire. Thank you. 
I'm gonna take off just a little bit now um, because it's easier. And then I will clean up the rest of the edge when it dries off a little bit. So, that was the first color on the three plates. Now I'm just going to let it dry a little bit <clears throat> and then I'm going to clean it up. In the meanwhile, I will clean up the table, clean up my, uh, my bucket here, something, and um, get ready for the next color. I do spend a little bit of time making sure that uh, all the glaze is even. Sometimes it's enough just to rub your finger. Sometimes I use this um, whip and uh, just scrape. If there's a little bit too thick of a layer, I can just scrape that um, away. And now with this glaze, it's actually not such a big problem because the different um, thickness just creates variation of the color in a really nice way. Um, for other glazes it's more important. Um, but I still want to keep it sort of um, even. And then um, I also usually just scrape off the edge to make sure that we have a sharp edge, uh, a sharp glazed edge. a little bit at the bottom. It's so messy this glaze but um, it's easy enough to remove. It does take a little extra time to do this but um, it pays off because this um, last part of it is just what makes it stand out so much more nice. So, I think this looks good. Especially, of course, the button. You've got to make sure there's no glaze there, otherwise it's going to stick to your kill. 
And of course, it's mostly where I put out the glaze that there's some uh, overrun of it. And that's where I have to be extra careful to get all the glaze off. The rest of um, the rest of the edge here is just a question of making sure that it's, it's even and then um, sort of have a sharp um, distinction between where it's glazed and not glazed. That's it. Now I'm ready to stack the first ones um, in a kiln. As always, it's sort of a puzzle to figure out how to stack the kiln the best way. And as I mentioned, I have these wonderful uh, plate shelves that I can use to, uh, to stack the plates. And I think this way I can actually have two um, stacks in each layer. And I think I can have maybe four or five um, in each. So that means 10 plates in each layer. That's very good. And as you see, there's still some space around it. So I can place some, um, some vases. I have some stuff I can put there. And uh, depending on what I will put next to it, I can, I can then decide how high I'm going to stack this. That's going to be very efficient. The next one I'm going to do is the Heath A2 White. I don't have that much left, but uh, since I'm going to pour it in, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that's enough. Uh, if I had to dip it, I would need a lot more. So this is actually nice. And as you see, I already messed myself up. <laughs> that's why you take working clothes on. So yeah, it's, it's okay. You've got to keep your table clean because otherwise you're going to get um, wrong glazes on the plates. The tricky part with this uh, way of glazing is to get the glaze to the same um, distance from the edge all the way around. It takes just a little bit of practice, but it's okay. I also found that, um, again, it, it, it depends on the glaze you're using, but it's actually better to pour in a little too much than a little too little, because if it's too little, you have to add more and then the time the glaze have on the pot is um, maybe getting too much, but yeah. Yeah, she did it again. A little bit more there. Anyway, with this glaze, it's gonna work. So again, just gonna clean up. Um, that's about the time it takes for the glaze to dry. If the glaze is formulated correctly, um, it should dry in like a matter of a minute or less. Um, if it dries much slower, it's probably have a problem with the formulation. So now, did you see what I forgot? <laughs> After talking so much about being organized, I forgot to get the numbers, but I can still do it. I didn't put them in the kiln yet, but. <laughs> This time I'm going to remember to add the numbering. So I'm going to start with this, uh, and it's number seven. And this is going to be my homemade black or charcoal black mat, which is not black at all because, <laughs> yeah, it's green, as we talked about in the beginning, but I really love how it came out. So um, I did have a little bit of problems with this, that it, um, 
got too thick. Um, so I defecated it um, with some sodium silicate and it should be much better now. But I just don't want this um, to be applied too thick. So therefore I have to be a little faster on this one because if it soaks too long it will be too thick. Let's see how that goes. so bad. I don't think I can do it any much faster than this, but I think it's good. Application so far looks okay, so uh, it's a good start. So there we go. So, cleaning up. Yeah, this looks very nice and even, um, so I'm optimistic. I'm only going to stack, <clears throat> I found out, four plates times two in this layer. And that's because the vase I have over here is not higher than this. So it doesn't make any sense to make it any higher. I can see now that it would make good sense to have some cups to fill up um, the spaces around these uh, plates. Unfortunately, I don't have any cups that uh, need to get um, fired, or some tall vases, slim vases. But still, you know, I have eight plates in just one layer, and I can probably have two or three layers more. So I'm hoping I can have all 25 plates. Let's see. I'm not going to show you every single plate <laughs> with all the different glazes, because I think you get the point now. It's basically the same. So um, instead, I'm going to jump forward uh, and uh, show you the results. Now I'm done. I glazed all my plates and uh, a few extra things, uh, some bowls and some vases. I didn't manage to get all 25 plates into one kiln, but I did manage to get 21, which was my primary goal because this way I've been able to test seven different glazes on three different types of clay on my plates. So there are 21 variations in this kiln. And on top of that, I also found space for two textured vases and two, fa uh, two uh, fluted uh, bowls. So that's pretty good. I'm impressed. Um, and that is due to the plate kiln shelves that I showed you before. They're amazing. So um, now I'm going to start the fire and um, in about two days, it should be ready. One and a half day, maybe. I will, of course, show you the results. Good morning. It's Sunday morning. Had my first cup of coffee. It's a little bit cold. It is early springtime in Denmark, so that's how it is. Now the kiln have cooled down. It's uh, below 100 degrees, uh, so it's ready. Oh. I know I said this many times before, but please wait. I'm not personally the most patient person, but um, it pays off to wait. First of all, if you open it too early, especially with the glaze fire, you could crack off the glaze and destroy your pots. Um, but also the heating elements. You put stress on your heating elements if you open the kiln too early, and then they won't last this long, and they're very expensive to, um, to change. But also, I mean, what's the point in opening it when it's super hot? Because you can't touch the pots anyway, and you can't put them anywhere. So in my case, it's usually about one and a half days, so 36 hours, and then um, it's below 100 degrees when I can open it. Sometimes I put a little piece of brick in between when it's below 200 degrees, just to help it get down the last couple of um, degrees. 
So um, let's go and take a look. It's so exciting. Ah, that looks really good. Oh, at least the first layer. It almost looks perfect. Even though it's um, below 100 degrees, it's still pretty warm. <laughs> um, I wouldn't like to touch them with my bare hands, but uh, it looks very good so far. Um, I think I'm just going to try and remove some of them with my gloves. Because it's 80 degrees now, um, so it should be safe to remove them, but too warm to touch. It looks really good. Now I don't even know which one it is. Some of them needs a little bit of grinding here just because of the... Nah, I just dust it off. Yeah, I had to use this um, little piece of kiln shelf here because there wasn't, there wasn't one... There was one spot left and I wanted to have all 21 so I could have the variations. Now of course, not to my surprise, but the floating blue comes out really nice. Anyway, I'm not going to take your time, just empty the whole kill and then I will show you the final results in a second. Now I got all the plates out of the kiln. Uh, I took some photos and uh, I had some time to evaluate the results a little bit. And all in all, I'm very happy. I'm thrilled. <laughs> it's still not perfect. It's a journey for me. Uh, I'm trying to find the perfect design and colors in my mind so I can move forward and make more of the same ones. Let's just look at the shape and the clay first. That came out very good. I already knew these types of clay that I selected, three clays. I like them for other purposes, but I haven't used them for, for plates. And they came out really nice. The gray and the red, high iron, and the black one. And one thing that is really nice to see, all of them, there's no cracks, there's no S cracks at the bottom that people fear so much with plates. It didn't happen. And they're all totally flat. They're not warping. They sit really well on the table. And that despite of the fact that I dried them in the most brutal way. <laughs> I threw them on, the, on my bed. I didn't wire them off. I dried them in room temperature until the next day when they release themselves and I trimmed them and I dried them another couple of days. And then I bish fired them stacked like seven or eight at a time. <laughs> and then I, of course, glazed them and glazed fired them my new um, with my new kiln furniture for plates. So it was a very brutal way of doing it. Opposite of what everybody say you have to do with plates, I didn't do it. I didn't cover them in plastic. I didn't dry them slowly. And it worked out. No cracks. They're totally flat. That's a very good thing. And I do think that all the clays, the gray, the red, and the black, is beautiful in its own way. I do think that the wet, however, may be a little bit too dominating, uh, especially um, especially with the with the lighter um, with the lighter glazes. I think maybe it's too dominating in a way. The gray and the black is more neutral, and especially the black. I really like that because it gives a nice contrast to any kind of of glaze color, and also it has the least uh, grog. It's very fine particles, so, so the, 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 the floor, the bottom of the, of the plate comes out very smooth. And also the burnishing I did was really good on, on this one. On the other clays, um, after the, the glaze fire, sometimes because it shrinks a little bit more, the, the grog can kind of stick out again. And that, that happens to some degree on the, on the, on the gray one. But when I, when I grind it with a very fine, maybe a 400 uh, mesh uh, uh, diamond grinder, it becomes really smooth and nice. And it only takes a few seconds. So it's not a big problem. So my favorite is the gray and, um, and the black one for now. So let's see. Talk about the glazes. I think all of them in their own right came out really good. Blo floating blue, not a surprise. <laughs> it came out really, really well. It always do. And the funny thing with floating blue is that it doesn't really matter what clay it is, it always comes out the same. 
Maybe it's because I apply it on a very thick layer, so it kind of just dominates um, uh, whatever clay you use, except when I used it on porcelain. That came out a little bit lighter. But then again, porcelain is super white, so maybe that's it. I do think, however, on the gray one, it, the, the, the swirly pattern and the breaking over it comes out the strongest. So that's really good. Also, again, my own uh, version of the, uh, of the charcoal black matte that is now green <laughs> came out really, really nice. And this time after I adjusted the glaze, lowered the specific gravity and added a little bit of sodium silicate, it just applied perfect. So, so this is really, really good for the pouring. It's perfectly applied. It's very nice. <clears throat> the, 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 the breaking over the, over the swirly is, is very strong and just the way I like it. It came out the strongest on the red clay though, uh, because then the, the red sticks through and, and it gives a nice contrast to the green. But um, it looks good on all of them. Also, this glaze that I almost forgot about, um, the, the, the waterfall that uh, I haven't used for years, it's just been sitting there. I took it up again for, for the plates. I think it's really delicate. It's a very nice, it's very shiny, but it, it looks really, really good. So I'm happy with that too. Um, and the not too good, in my personal opinion, um, end of it is um, the Fogart gilt. Because when I apply it with pouring, it became a little bit too thick of a layer. So the thicker it is, the wider it gets. So this is so thick that you don't get much of that red breaking that I like so much about it. And that I get, for example, on, the, on, on these cups. Even though there's a lot of, of, of white, there's still a lot of the, the iron uh, sticking through. I didn't get so much of that. But that's the problem with the way that I glaze them. I pour it up. I can't really do it much faster. So maybe for the floating blue, I need to spray glaze it instead. It's sort of the same thing with Lynette's Opel. Um, it actually came out okay on this one, but again, it has to be very, very thin before it turns bluish. Otherwise, it just gets uh, white. But other than that, I think it actually looks really good. Another one that I haven't used for ages is, um, is the Hellblau from Karl Jäger. And that actually came out surprisingly good. <laughs> Except it's, it's less, blau, uh, <laughs> less blue and a little more greenish than I remember it. But it's a nice silky matte, a little more shiny than silky matte, but the surface is super nice. Um, so I think I may want to move on with that as well. I'm not sure I like the white one, the A2 white too much. Uh, I think it's too pale. It's like, there's not so much reaction in it. But I showed it to some other people that came around and, and I mean, they liked it very much. So I don't know. Anyway, on the bad side, <laughs> really bad side, <laughs> not terribly, but there was a couple of things. I um, should have kept my uh, kiln plates cleaner. They look clean to me, but apparently there was a little bit of, uh, of glaze. Hardly couldn't see it. So one of them, now I can't remember which one, but um, one of them got a little bit of glaze there, and then of course it glues to the, to the, to the, to the um, shelf, and then when I took it off, there was a little bit of chipping off. It's not bad. I can grind it. And I can use it. Of course, I wouldn't sell it. Um, I'm probably not going to sell them anyway. It's just a test for me. Unless some of you guys want to buy them, and that's fine. But it's not a big problem. But of course, I need to just look over my, my shelves and make sure that they're totally clean when, when, I, when I do my place like this. But I think that's all. Um, I'm all in all just happy. Yeah, by the way, I made this uh, document <laughs> um, where I um, described all the combinations I did, different clays, um, the clays and the glazes with links to references, and uh, for each of the for each of the plates, there's a, there's a detailed page with a photo and and the clay and the glaze and some comments whenever appropriate. Uh, I will put a link uh, to the PDF. You're welcome to download that if you want to go into more details about what I did. And also remind you that I have a video about how I made the plates, how I threw the plates, and I'm going to link to that too in the description. So um, if you want to see the whole thing, then you're very welcome. And 
I very much welcome your opinion. Uh, please make a comment below. Which one do you like the most? <laughs> do you like the white ones that I don't like so much? Or is there anything else? Do you like the red clay more than the black clay? Whatever. Um, please leave a comment. Also, if you have good suggestions for other glazes that we should try on, on, on these plates. And um, whatever. I welcome all debates. So if you like this, uh, please subscribe, share, and again, make a comment. Um, and come back next week. I will, as usual, have a new uh, video, detailed video like this, every Sunday, usually about 5 p.m. Central European time. So um, I hope to see you again. Have a good day. Thank you.